Hey guys, um, this is an example video for lecture one. Today we're going to be designing and building BFAs. So um, this is for when you look at a language and you have a description either as a set or informally as something else, and you're trying to build an automaton that captures precisely the same set of strings. And unfortunately, this is a little bit like designing a program. Um, there's no obvious procedure for how you do the design, but I'm gonna try to walk you through one example and give you ideas of my thought process if I'm trying to go through and build an automaton for the first time. So a good reference for this video and another uh, introduction to designing DFAs is in Sipser, pages 41 through 44. So let's consider a language over the alphabet, sigma equals zero, one, two, three. And we'll consider the language described as follows. It'll be all the strings X such that the first character in X is the same as the length of the string X. All right, so that's a well-defined language. Uh, if I've just opened up a problem set and I've seen this language for the first time, I don't necessarily have a good intuitive sense of what this language is. So before I do anything else, before I start drawing states, I'm going to try to figure out what are some strings in this language and what are some strings that aren't in this language. So, um, Clearly this language is interested in the first character in the string. So let's say, you know, suppose we have some string that starts with a zero. Well, in that case, the first character in the string is a zero. And then to be in the language, the length of the string must also be zero. Um, but the only string of length zero is the empty string epsilon. And the empty string doesn't have any characters in it. So, there are no strings of length zero that start with zero. We can rule that case out directly. If my string starts with one, now I'm looking for a string where the first character is one and the length of the string is one. Well, that's just going to be one. Uh, if I start with two, I see now I've started to get some flexibility. Um, I start with a two. And then I have to have exactly two characters in my string. So I could have two zero, I could have two one, I could have two two, or I could have two three. Those are the four strings over my alphabet that have exactly two characters and start with a two. And then now the pattern is pretty clear. Um, if I'm looking for strings in my language that start with three, well, it'll be any string that starts with a three and then has three other characters from my language. So now I've got a good intuitive sense of the strings I want to accept. And if I really wanted to brute force it at this point, I could do a DFA that has a million branches and just deterministically accepts each one of these strings individually. But I think we can be a little smarter. And typically, if we understand kind of the organizing principle behind the language, there's a way to draw a DFA with fewer states than a brute force method. So let's see, I'm gonna start and I'm going to draw a start state. I haven't decided yet whether my start state will be an accept or not. And then um, my first rule, I've already seen if I start with a zero, I'm going to want to immediately reject. So uh, whenever I have some language which rejects as soon as it sees something, like as soon as it sees a string that starts with a zero, um, I can pretty safely assume that my DFA is going to have some garbage state that I'll call bad. Um, so characteristics of state bad are once you get here, you can never leave. Once I'm in state bad, no matter what character I read in, I stay in state bad and state bad is not an accept state. So if I start with a zero, well, I'm in state bad and I'm done. Um, what about if we start with a one? 
Well, if I read in a one, I'm at my start state. I see a one. What do I want to happen now? Um, well, if I've just read in a one, then great. I'm going to accept. I've seen the exact only string that starts with one and has one character. Um, so I'll make that an accept state. And then when I'm looking at transitions out of this state, I think, all right, if I see any other characters after I've seen a one, well, then I'm going to want to reject. If I see one zero or one one or anything else, that's a string that starts with a one and is more than one character. So anything else from here, we're going right into the garbage. Um, for two, let's say, uh, I'm the machine and I've just read in a string that starts with two. I'll go to some other state. Now, if my string is only two, I don't want to accept because that's a string of length one. So I'll make this not an accept state. But if I see a two and then I see anything else, a zero, a one, a two, or a three, then I'm going to want to accept. And similarly to before, if there are more characters after the second character, I'm going to go straight to my bad state. Um, and finally, now that we're starting to get the gist of what's going on here, if I start with a three, um, I'm going to put in a little chain of three states. I'm abbreviating the thought process here a little bit, but really what am I doing? I'm saying, well, look, if I start with a three, then the only thing that matters from then on is whether or not my input string has exactly three characters, at which point I'll end up in this accept state on the right. And if it's got more than three characters, I want to go to the bad state and stay there till I'm done. If it's got fewer than three characters, my process will sputter out and die in one of these first couple of states before I get to the accept state. So that's my design DFA. Um, I've gone through my process. I think I've covered everything. But how do I make sure? Now I've got this DFA on the page, I can test it. And certainly before you know, I turn in any homework, I'm going to want to run some standard tests to make sure my DFA does what I hope it does. Uh, and I might uncover an error, in which case I can revise my DFA and start testing again. So um, this is by no means an exhaustive list of checks, but here are some standard checks you can always try that will at least help you out some of the time. Uh, one thing I can check, have I marked off um, exactly one start state so my DFA knows where to start? Yes, it's this guy up here on the left. Second, do I have accept states where I want them? So a DFA does not have to have any specific number of accept states. It can have zero or it can be all accept states. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm accepting exactly where I want to accept. So here I'll accept, I've got one accept state for st strings starting with one, two, or three that accepts if those strings have one, two, or three characters respectively. So that's what I want. Um, the second thing I can check is transitions. So one uh, rule of a DFA state diagram, if you're watching this later in the course, it does not apply to non-deterministic finite automata, but it does apply for DFAs. I have to have transitions from all states on all characters. So this is equivalent to having a well-defined transition function. No matter where I am at any point in the computation, if there are still characters coming down the pike, I need to know where to go next. So what I can do is I can look through each of my states in turn and see do I have an out arrow labeled 0, 1, 2, 3? Do I have at least exactly one out arrow labeled 0, 1, 2, and 3 on every state? Um, and in this case, I'm looking over, and my check has actually caught a little mistake that I want to leave in. So on the far right here, I drew an edge. I forgot to label it. My intention was to label it 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, so now I've caught that. Uh, it helps just to generally look over all your states. Uh, when I was rehearsing this video, I forgot the uh, transition from the bad state to itself. So my DFA in that case would have been undefined for long strings that ended up in the bad state. So I've already caught 
one little error. And then finally, the third check that is always a good idea is test a bunch of strings uh, including the empty string, which is always a little special case that it's good to uh, make sure your DFA works on. So I'm going to write down a bunch of inputs. And I'm going to check just by simulating my DFA that they lead to the output that I want. Um, there's no set list of inputs. But generally speaking, I want some examples that I know should succeed and some examples that I know should fail. Maybe some long strings and some very short strings. Uh, in this particular case, let's test the empty string, which should fail. Um, the string one, which should succeed. It's got one character and begins with one. One zero, which should fail. It's got two characters and begins with one. Two one, which should succeed. Two zero zero, which should fail. It's too long. Three one two three, which should fail, or sorry, should succeed. Um, it's got, no, that will fail. It's got four characters. How about 313? That'll succeed. It starts with a three. It's got three characters. And finally, um, three, one, also too short. Um, I'll do these in a few different colors just so I can leave the mess up there. Uh, when I test on epsilon, well, epsilon is going to start in my start state. And then there are no characters to read in. So my process stops. It'll reject because I am in, hopefully that yellow is visible because I'm in a reject state. Uh, on the one, I'll start in my start state and then I'll read in that one and stop in an accept state. So that is a yes, we'll accept there. Uh, one zero, start state, read in the one, read in the zero. Now we're in the bad state. So that is a reject. Um, two one, that'll take us from the start state to two. And then along this transition to one, that's an accept. Um, two zero zero, that'll take us here. And since we're too long, we'll go all the way down to the bad state. That's a reject. Three one three. So we got a three, a one, and a three. That's an accept. And finally, three one. Um, so that is a reject because we don't make it all the way to the accept state. Um, the reason I've left this mess up here is so that um, as I'm testing, I can kind of see which pathways I've checked and which pathways I haven't checked. For instance, uh, if I wanted to be really cautious, I could say, well, I haven't done anything in the bad state. I guess I've forgotten to check really long strings. So I could say, well, what about the string? I also haven't checked string starting with zero. So what about a really long string starting with zero? Like zero, one, three, three, three. Well, I can put that on. It starts with zero. So yes, I go to the bad state. And then all of these extra characters are just going to take me around this loop until I wind up in the bad state after I've finished reading in characters. So that is also a reject. Um, so now, although I can't be perfectly sure, I can be fairly confident that my DFA does what I want it to do because I've plugged in a bunch of strings and they all line up with the behavior I want to see. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in class.